okay so let me continue so the business uh, commitment means the documentation support that is required in order to get the operational commitment to work together and agree on cloud management and investment of each and every workload because if you don't know what is there in cloud how will you manage and how can you manage something which is not visible so that is our next uh, first step in order to get the management baseline the visibility and visibility and inventory management so inventory and visibility provides you a vision of what needs to be uh, visualized and how it can be visualized because in order to get the data it is very simple but visualizing in a very eye candy manner is key part next is operational compliances as i told you that how what kind of operational compliances are required in order to move your workload some of you might have been uh, aware of iso 27000 hipaa compliance for healthcare and financial compliances as well so does azure satisfy all this does azure provide any of the guarantees in order to uh, get the compliances then uh, protect and recovery as i told is also important so let me go to the next slide so in inventory and visibility you first need to collect the proper operational data so collecting the data is a cr key crucial part then after collecting the data, data you need to understand how it can be managed so in order to get this we're going to use couple of tools so the first tool what we're going to look is azure services because if you have hosted a resource in azure we need to know exactly how much sla it is satisfying whether any of my services is going down if it is going down what is the reason for it so in order to get that first uh, the service which we are going to discuss is azure service itself this service is of free of cost this gives you a global view of every services that is hosted on azure not only that it also gives you a personalized view of the health of the azure resources or services that is only opted by you and these resources can be drilled down to the particular service and understand why it has went down and every rca is been provided by microsoft if any of your resource has gone down so in order to get an alert mechanism this has three different kinds of alert you can uh, configure email alert or sms or you can use a webhook so webhook has uh, pop, uh, popular in these days because of the new adoption of team so in hello yeah so in a uh, new teams as we know there are multiple channels are hosted based on uh, many departments so, so those who are not aware of teams teams is uh, microsoft teams is a chat platform which is used in order to get or communicate with each other inside organization as well as outside so this has multiple chat groups so these chat groups are used in order to get an alert for example the it team would have a chat group where all the alerts have been pushed so in a day you will be getting more than 20 emails but uh, after work hours the people who are uh, looking at the emails are way less but they still have the eagerness to see the chat so that's why pushing a alert using webhook to a chat window is uh, very much been opted these days so next service what you are going to see is azure monitor so this service was introduced on late uh, 2018 by microsoft after the ignite so this is a collision between all the uh, monitoring tools that has been previously provided by azure so if people are aware there there was a tool called oms which was used before azure monitor and there was a separate tool as well called uh, log analytics so this log analytics oms is now been renamed as azure monitor so azure monitor is used into three different categories first is in order to get a monitoring and visualization of a metrics to see the utilization of every resources on its own it can be used secondly if you want to query logs and get what are logs are been there and for the later analytical purpose you can use azure monitor but in order to get the anal analyzing logs you need to enable log analytics so uh, i will talk log and i'll talk about log analytics in the next uh, slide so this is uh, the second uh, key part then the third part uh, azure monitor has been used is to set up alerts so we are not going to monitor the dashboard 24/7 right so we need an alert mechanism where uh, if, for example if one of your workload utilization has shooted up to 85% or more than 85% for half an hour or for more than 15 minutes 
and you expect more workload or uh, usage is going to happen inside that uh, machine, then you need some manual intervention or some automated action to be taken place. For example, if this uh, machine requires to be scaled up or scaled down or even scaled out, these actions can be performed with the help of Azure alerts. So Azure Monitor can suffice the uh, visualization metrics from application level, container level, virtual machine level, and also from network level. So you might ask from, uh, from network perspective, what kind of logs I get? You will get uh, logs related to from where your uh, workload has been accessed or what kind of uh, protocols are being used in my workload. This will give you the energy logs. So third, as a uh, third service we are going to see is log analytics. So this has a very different name previously called log analysis workspace. Now it has been changed to log analytics, but the functionalities are pretty much the same. So this is use this uses a Custo query model, which is similar to SQL and Splunk. If you are aware of any of these languages, you will be able to understand these. So log analytics gives you a unique environment to store any of the logs. It could be a, a Azure logs or it could be a third party logs or any other cloud. Even the on-premises log can be imported and it will give you store your own repository for collecting all the logs together. Because once you store all the logs together, the analytic will work really easy. Otherwise, retrieving the logs from different environment itself is a pretty big headache. Then after storing it in a one single workspace, what you need is a monitoring solution, which can give you a proper visualization to understand what is there exactly. To give you a uh, slight idea, I'll show you a dashboard of monitoring how it looks like. So this is one of my uh, monitoring dashboard, which I use to analyze the activity logs, uh, device health log, security audit logs, and Windows OS logs. So let me open Windows OS log and show you what kind of uh, dashboard I get. So these monitoring solutions are uh, more than 25, uh, more than 45, I believe, uh, monitoring solutions are available in currently. Uh, one second. Currently, there are more than 45 uh, more solutions are available in the marketplace. to slide down yes okay so this is the dashboard which i want to show you so this dashboard gives you the cpu utilization all the virtual machines i have acquired and if you, if you can see this gives me that average utilization of each and every metrics and it gives you a color coding as well if you believe that machines average utilization is more than 90 percent you know you need to do some uh, optimization as well as whether the skew needs to be increased or you need some manual interventions to be made. So same like memory utilization or disk utilization. So how it can be uh, transformed into your environment. So these are a couple of monitoring solutions which will be used. So Azure currently, Microsoft uh, currently provides a couple of monitoring solutions which will be used. So first one is update management. Update management gives you the idea about how many machines in your Azure are being patched and how much is how much machines are up to date and how many patches have been failed and rollover has taken place so these kind of monitoring solutions are provided by update management solution then change tracking is one of the crucial uh, monitoring solution used in order to uh, in order for the ISMS uh, audit because you need to know exactly what uh, config file has been changed by when because the tracking inside uh, inside uh, directory and config files are pretty are pretty uh, in in a in conventional way to do that so in order to get this tracking and inventory we need to use a change tracking and inventory method so i will show you what change tracking uh, audits i get as well So change tracking is a part of a uh, Azure automation account. It 
does not get activated by default. In order to activate this, you need a log analytic workspace, and after that, you need to manually enable this. This can be enabled at the subscription level or individual virtual machine level. So this gives you what all events has happened, how many demands uh, uh, has been changed, and how many files it has been changed, and even the registry level and software level update or uh, updates are being specified here. So currently, this machine is just got booted up, so that's why no changes are happening. So if any change has happened, there will be a deviation in the graph. So next, uh, Azure Activity Logs. As you know, what all activity you perform on Azure is being tracked. And it has been stored for at least 30 days. If you want to store for more than 30 days, you can use uh, uh, Azure Storage Account and collect all your logs again to your Log Analytics workspace for your analytical purpose. So log, uh, Azure Activity Logs gives you all the activities that you perform, that is uh, creating a virtual machine or updating the CPU or updating the disk, uh, shutting down or uh, changing a pass uh, key, access key, or creating an FTP deployment credential. Every single part of your change in Azure is being tracked. So this will be easy for us to understand who has made the change and why this change has been made. And the third, uh, the fourth service we're going to uh, see in the monitoring solution is Azure Log Analytical Health Agent. So as you know, the Individual agents are installed in every virtual machine or the on-premise machine in order to get the get these logs. You need to know exactly whether these agents are active and alive. If not, if not, then what uh, troubleshooting needs to be done? For example, sometimes this agent must have an update because of a lack of update. This agent health might go down. So these monitoring solutions are also available. Then anti-malware uh, assessment is something uh, is available currently only for Windows machine but it is soon to be in a place for Linux machines as well. So this is nothing but a basic anti-malware solution. This assesses your machine and makes sure that no malware attack has is will happen. If it has happened, it will automatically resolve and put it in a quarantine vault. Then as you know, Azure monitoring uh, solution provides a monitoring window for VMs. So I will show you a couple of uh, dashboard metrics, what I get for uh, Azure monitor in terms of VM. So let me go to my portal. I have a couple of dashboards. The log analytics uh, workspace dashboard. Uh, we will come to that later. Okay. So these are the kind of metrics you will get from Azure Monitor. So this will be a segregated place where you get all kind of uh, metrics in place. For example, these are for uh, web apps. So in web apps, what is the average memory the utilization that has been happening for all my machines? And what is the response time of a single page I'm getting? And what is the CPU utilization time? And these plans are available, these metrics are available for individual services with different capabilities. So this is a CPU utilization for a virtual machine. I'll show you what kind of, what all metrics are available in terms of that. So by default, a native service has all these metrics that you can analyze. It can be a disk, disk IOPS or network input or output. What are the billable network uh, input that you are getting? All this. And there are a couple of more other uh, services or metrics are in place, which are still under preview. So this keeps on updating day by day. Let me go back to the presentation. Then as you know, Azure Security Center also provides a lot of uh, advisors and updates. So these also can be uh, monitored as a solution. I believe I have a monitoring solution for that also in place.
So this gives you a dashboard of how many computers need an active resources and what all remediations need to be done in order to improve my security score. So this will tell you how secure my environment can be. Okay. Next, uh, let's take an overall view of all the services that we use and where should we use these services. First, uh, we saw Azure Service Cell. This, in terms of analyzing the performance of a resources on your on the Azure, or to in order to diagnose the service health of a Azure resource, you can use Azure Service Health. Then, you know, when you want to collect all the resource logs. It can be on-prem, Azure, or any other cloud, and segregate in one single place. You can go with Azure Log Analytics. In order to get a monitoring solution in a centralized one single place, you need can go with Azure Monitor. Then, in, in order to get the change tracking and inventory method for auditing purpose, you can use Azure Change Tracking and Inventory Service. Then, Azure Activity Logs are used to get what all changes are being happened in your inside your subscription and even your tenant level. Then also there is something called guest OS monitoring. So guest OS monitoring is not enabled by default. It it gives you an extensive report or metric that can be analyzed. By default, Azure Monitor doesn't provide RAM utilization because in order to get the RAM utilization, because RAM utilization can be virtualized or it can be a uh, actual physical memory. So in order to get the actual physical memory, we need to install the guest OS monitoring agent. So these agents has to be manually installed or enabled in the individual virtual machines or the on-premise machines. Both of them, it would work. Then network watcher. So in order to get the network logs like the energy logs, the flow, how or where your traffic is being blocked, these kind of metrics you can get from Azure network logs. Then in terms of DNS, there is something called DNS analytics service, which is a part of Azure Monitor, but it comes with some cost, but it gives a lot of perks like security, performance, and operation of a DNS. So exactly how many authentication has happened and who has authenticated from there. So many a times uh, a server is hosted, a DNS server is hosted in Azure as well as on the on-premises. So, uh, in order to in order for the cloud application to authenticate, it goes to the cloud a DNS server for the on-premises it goes to on-premises server. So these uh, reroutes and uh, in, in place routing can be analyzed from the DNS analytics solution. So next we're going to see operational compliance, how it is important. So in order to get the operational compliance in place, we have four key pillars that need to be addressed. One is reducing the, reducing the configuration drift. So while setting a virtual machine or moving a workload from on-premise to Azure, I believe everyone has a standard organization policy, how a machine should be configured. But even though there is a configuration diff between one environment and the other. So in order to sustain all this, we can use a couple of services to attain this compliance. So addressing the uh, configuration drift is important. Next, avoid security vulnerabilities. As you know, no one trusts cloud. So because they don't see the data, they don't trust it. So that is a simple fact. But Azure provides you a list of all the vulnerabilities as, as well as security information that can be analyzed with the help of Security Center and a couple of other tools as well. So that we have to, we can address and see how the operational compliances would come in place. Then we need to create a enterprise grade environment. That means at the small level itself, even if it is the one single machine that you have hosted in on premises, that could be a big machine. You need when you transfer it to cloud, you need to split it into three different tiers because that is the best practice for the scaling reliability as well as feasibility. Because in the future stage, I'm put if your organization is growing bigger, we have to see the bigger picture, how easily it can be scaled without the least downtime. So that, that's why we always need to have the very good diagram in, in order to understand how and what needs to be done at the time of migration. And attaining governance is very key part because you need to understand who is making the change and why they are making the change. If an unauthorized person is making the change, for example, many a times the developers has access to change the SKU or the size of the virtual machine. But uh, from my perspective, 
it should be the organization's IT people who has to maintain the skew and skew and skew and the sizes or the any kind of update that needs to be done inside a virtual machine. So in, in order to attain the governance, it is also a key part of operational compliance. So let's see a couple of tools what we can use. First is an update management. So update management is a service provided by micro, uh, Microsoft in order to patch your virtual machine as well as your on-premise machine. So these patches could be uh, Windows updates or it could be any Microsoft uh, service updates. All these patches can be updated in an automated manner without any manual intervention. You can schedule all these uh, patches and you can schedule even when it when this package has to run, what package needs to be installed. If you believe that some patch is has some bug, you can avoid those package by excluding them. This is how simple the update management has come across. So you can use hybrid run group in order to automate your on-premises machine as well. Then it also comes with a monitoring agent in order to analyze whether your machine is patched or not. If not patched, for how long it has not been patched and how vulnerable it is, all these details will be available with the help of update management. Then comes the Azure policy. In order to attain the governance, it is a key part. So Azure policy covers uh, four simple steps to attain governance. So first in terms of cloud governance. This means, as I told you, who should have what access? So not everyone should have the ability to provide access. Of course, rollback access is a very good uh, service that can be used in order to provide uh, permissions. But I have seen uh, many companies using contributor or owner permissions only. You no, know, uh, many people doesn't customize their roles in order to provide it to the stakeholders or anyone who is working on the environment. So we can set policies in terms of who should give access to what level. Then next comes operating system configuration. In terms of auditing, so the group policies which you use to push from AD server, that can be attained now from Azure policy itself. And even the application configuration or the presences can be audited with the help of Azure policy. For example, if you see the TLS 1.2 is now the most stable version. If you see some application using TLS 1.0, you can clearly deny that this application cannot be run in Azure. So that kind of policy are very crucial in terms of audit purposes. And you can also set what environment setting needs to be done. For example, sometimes uh, when an infrastructure uh, person is asked to create a PHP machine, he might go with 7.0, 7.1 or 7.2. So in order to get the regularity and avoid the configuration drift, you can use Azure policy to attain the environment setting as well. So Azure Blueprint is one of the servers which helps you build your whole infrastructure in terms of code. So Azure Blueprint can define a repeatable set of Azure resources in order for you to deploy it again and again. So this will give you a method where you can orchestrate your deployment using a simple uh, resource template. So this will be in the, in part of JSON format and the deployment will take place from Azure portal itself. So you don't have to have an external tool in order to deploy it from. So this also deploys role assignment, policy assignment, resource management templates along with resource management grouping. So resource manage management grouping is very important in, in order to classify the resources because it's just a logical grouping but uh, many a times everything is there in one one single resource group but that is not the right way you need to rightly segregate it so these things while deploying can be used by azure uh, blueprint you can uh, de develop and attain the governance Next, uh, let's see a couple of tools which you have discussed and uh, where it can be used. As I told you, update management is used to manage your update and schedule it. Policy management are used to enforce policies and uh, guest compliances. 
then Azure Blueprint is used to maintain the configuration and automated policy for your whole infrastructure. Next, protect and recovery. Every mission critical workload needs to be protected and understood how easily it can be retrieved and how fast this machine can provide a maximum number of uptime. So when we talk about protecting the environment, these are the three important things that we need to understand. First, it has to reduce business interruption. Whenever a machine goes down, how fast it can, how seamlessly it can come up is the key, uh, key part. Next is preventing the outage. So if you believe that some sale or some kind of consumption has increased in your workload, how easily can you scale up and avoid that? The auto scaling information needs to be provided. Next, enterprise grade environment. So as I told you, you need to think of the bigger picture and provide a discipline in such a way that it is thought of all the factors that will implicate for a workload to go down. So there will be a couple of services that we're going to see. First one is Azure Backup. So Azure Backup is one of the services which helps you backup most of the infrastructure as well as SaaS services. So it is a cloud-based solution, so you don't have to worry about what are the size and there is no limitation as in terms of size it can store data up to 32 petabyte so that is this uh, this size varies from the virtual machine and the database so this cloud solution will help you have a reliable scalable and cost competitive infrastructure i believe that every infrastructure which is crucial or critical needs to be backed up. So this helps you protect or make you want to go. If you have any changes that need to be made or if you want to revert the changes, Azure Backup will help you restore those changes and give back you the machine. So Azure uh, Backup currently supports uh, uh, Azure VM SQL databases in Azure VM and Azure Files in Azure Storage and on-premises machines as well. So when I uh, talk about uh, SQL database and Azure VM, in order to take a backup of a database uh, virtual machine, you don't have to take the whole virtual machine's backup. Taking the database will be more than enough because I believe everyone would be having a standard image or a snapshot in order to deploy a SQL virtual machine on the cloud. So Azure backup is being uh, charged only based on your amount of data that has been stored. So the installation file, paying for the installation file and uh, other system files are a waste of cost because you need to only pay for the data which is re actually required to be protected. So that's why they have introduced SQL databases in Azure VM that can segregatedly uh, protect it apart from the virtual machine system files. Next comes Azure Site Recovery. So this is one of the servers which is only there in Azure which helps you plan your disaster recovery. So this provides you a replication machine of your workload in another region. So this this helps you analyze why if a, if my, my primary machine goes down, how fast my secondary machine can come up because it is always replicated in sync. So there are two key factors that you need to understand over here that is uh, RPO and RTO. So RPO states that recovery point objective. So this is the amount of acceptance of data loss if any recovery needs to be done. So RPOs are always very less, it's more, always less than 10 seconds, but it varies from workload to workload. Then RTO, recovery time objective. So this is the amount of time that takes, the, takes to complete a recovery or restore. So in order to understand when the primary machine goes down, in how much time my secondary can come up. That gives you the RTO. And also you need to roll back the changes as well. So after once the secondary machine is up and running and the primary machine has come up, can I fail over all those changes from my secondary machine to the primary machine? Yes, indeed you can. This feature is also that a part of Azure site recovery. The next, let's see a summary of this. So in order to protect uh, your uh, data, you can use Azure Backup. Now in order to get 
the security information you can use azure security center so this gives you a overall view of all the environment or all the workloads that you have placed in your environment it will analyze and see and azure security center has two pricing level one is free and standard free gives you enough amount of recommendation but it won't give you the extensive level of recommendations so i would recommend to enable standard pricing tier for uh, azure security center because this will give you even the energy level whether your vm is being protected at network level or if whether your uh, VM, uh, virtual machine is encrypted or not if your uh, sql database has a td or not or all these virtual machines are being backed up or even the uh, sql database are being backed up or not so all these insights you will get only after opting to the standard security center plan so next you're going to see a couple of uh, engagement baselines that will be used in order to obtain this governance so one is you need to understand the lowest relative operational investment with the lowest investment you need to get higher throughput so that is always the business strategy that will be used so in order to get that you have to have greater commitment towards the optimization so for the optimization you need to have the minimum viable product so this product can be small or uh, large but always go with a small one have uh, enough features to satisfy the early cu early customers and provide a feedback for the future so go with a small vision but have always think about the future and design it in such a way how easily it can be expanded and also you need to have a business commitment because you need, you need to get every stakeholder involved and understand what you are doing and why you are doing this so until you satisfy all, all that you the business commitment doesn't have any purpose over here and optimizing the operational workload management is a crucial deviation so, so these are a couple of tools in order to get the enhanced uh, baseline so again uh, azure service change tracking is one of the process if you have to follow then in order to see what all changes are happening and where to get that we, you can use azure resource graph so azure resource graph gives you the visibility of all the changes that is happening inside your azure subscription next in order to uh, transfer or view these logs from your itsm systems you can use azure uh, service management connector so many people have an on premises it uh, on premises itsm systems which they are familiar with and they want to store all those logs so then yes you can use this then azure automation account is used for operational automations for example uh, how to get automate the service that has been used for example if i want to uh, shut down my machine and start my machine early in, in the morning because this is a development machine it doesn't have any work at night you can use azure automation or uh, if you have a etl job which runs on a sql server and every as you are aware whenever uh, data has been loaded on a virtual machine on a sql server there is a lot of buffer memory that has been consumed in order to do or reduce the time you can simply reboot the azure sql service and this will release all the operational memory that has been stored then azure uh, hybrid runbook will help you run the automation uh, plans which you have on the multiple cloud environment it could be on premise or multiple cloud then you're going to see azure desired state uh, configuration this will help you understand what, what is the great automation tool it can be the code based configuration of each and every os to reduce the error and configuration drift so as you know azure security center will give you the overall perspective of all the protection or security breaches that can happen in in advance so that's why in order to protect your environment azure security center is the key partial way so next as per the platform specialization there are four pillars that needs to be focused so first is improving the system design because in order to understand the platform you need to improve the design and the common system to to make sure how efficient 
and minimum interruption can happen. Next is automate remediations. So some improvisations are not cost efficient because some automation doesn't require that much cost. So the basic automation remediation will help you analyze and understand the cost optimization. Next is scale the solution. So as a system design and automate remediations are improved, these changes can scale across various environments through a service catalog. So service catalog is something where you can publish your images into the marketplace and analyze all them. Then there is a continuous improvisation, which is very important. This gives you a various monitoring tools that can be used to discover the increment and improvise that can be addressed in the next pass of systems and design automation. So in terms of uh, system design, there are five things that there are five things that you need to understand. First is scalability. So scalability is a crucial part. Next is availability, then resilience, security and management. So next we're going to see uh, why scalability is important. So in as I told you, when the consumption increases, the workload cannot handle if it is in the same state. You need a scalable environment in order to sufficient your workload and the consumption. So you need to design a system plan in such a way that how easily it can be scaled. Either you can use VM scale set or use a load balancer instead of one monolithic virtual machine. Then availability. Availability means if there is a system update or if it is a planned or unplanned disaster, can my workload or my environment sufficient these? then how resilient my environment can be. And security is often overlooked, but there is a very key part of a system design. And again, management, how easily and how efficiently you can manage it. Then automated remediation provides a planned resolution. So this plan can be uh, anything that could be a Windows update or a SQL patch or anything that doesn't require a manual intervention can be automated. Even a, a quick SQL Server reboot after a data ETL job has been run is rather quick recovery than investing a lot of time and money in understanding or optimizing it. Then remediating most of the common approaches. So all these common approaches, for example, a web app needs to be restarted after the deployment can be automated. Next, scale the solution. So scale the solution in such a way that it will manage in such in such a, a service catalog manner. How easily you can, a consumer can deploy and operate the solution. So it has to be in a one click deployment. So how easily you, you can manage the, all the solution from one single point. And you need to check the application compliances using Azure policies. So this will help you analyze whether the solution which I have built has all the attributes that is required for my audit to satisfy or provide the check. Then a company a continuous improvisation is very much necessary. So in order to do that, you need to get a strong feedback. And this feedback need to be tracked and adopted so that you can track exactly from which portion from which portion you have reached to what level so this will give you the basic automation and plat platform platform uh, automation that can be done and this will give you also the management team a very good insight of what you have done and how far you have come up and also the insight to the centralized platform is very important. So in order to do that, you can use services like Azure Monitor and understand and collect collectively all those things in one single point. So there are a couple of tools which we can use to obtain platform optimization. Platform specialization is first one is Azure Architecture Framework. So Azure has a doc where it gives you a list of all the sample 
workload that can be hosted on Azure. So this gives you a clear idea of how a workload should be placed and how secure it is. And even if there is any limitations are there, that will also be listed there. So this gives you a clear idea rather than investing your time and doing a POC. So this art architecture framework gives you uh, best practices of all the guidelines that need to be followed in order to obtain them. So next is Azure Automation. Azure Automation, as I told you, it will automate. Uh, it, help, it will help you automate the simple tasks and even the complicated tasks with the right amount of code. Then next is Service Catalog. So in order to manage your application in one single centralized uh, manner, you can use Azure uh, Manage Application Center, where it will provide you a self-service catalog on approved solution basis that will meet the organization standard. It is very much similar to Azure uh, Blueprint, but it, it, when you want to deploy the whole environment, for example, if uh, there is a, a couple of solutions already been uh, published in the marketplace, if you want to deploy a similar solution, but you want to store it in your private space, at that point, you want you can use uh, uh, Manage Application Center. And you can use Azure Monitor even for monitoring the containers and even the diagnostics of the containers are available with the help of Azure Monitor. Then Azure SQL Analytics. So as you know, there are uh, past services available in Azure. So this could be a SQL, PostgreSQL, or MySQL, or even a Cosmos DB. All those things can be monitored with the help of analytical tools. For Azure, we are using Azure SQL Analytics. So this gives you the insight about how well my query is performing and how it can improve, whether I do require any indexing that needs to be performed inside this particular view or how much I can optimize this code. So all the SQL analytics can be done with the help of Azure SQL analytics. And SQL service help gets the health of a service which is residing inside a virtual machine. So if you see a SQL, uh, a SQL server installed in a, inside a virtual machine and you want to analyze whether my SQL is consuming a lot of memory or if it is having a throughput much larger than what I have expected, all these things can be analyzed with the help of SQL Server Health Check. So next is a workload specialization. In terms of workload specialization, there are two things that comes into the picture. One is a cultural change, other one is beyond platform specialization. So when we talk about virtual, uh, uh, workload specialization, first thing is that we need, as we have compared all our services with a cloud adoption framework, you need to see how well you can correlate each and every service to your application. So in order to get your application uh, uh, metrics in place, we are going to use the tool called Application Insight. So anyway, I believe the next webinar session is about Azure Monitor and uh, uh, monitoring sessions or tools available. So please do attend to have uh, more insights about monitoring. So as I was saying, the Azure Application Monitoring will give you an application monitoring insights as well as monitoring and diagnostic of each and every app. So for example, if you want to see the PTL time of an individual application or you want to see the count of the page, how many people have viewed my uh, page and if you see a couple of libraries that is going to expire or a couple of libraries are being rendered from third party and which you see is a violation of a company policy, all these things can be analyzed with the help of application insights. So this is a sample dashboard what it will look like. I also showed you the real dashboard, how it will it can look in a very fancy manner. So these are a couple of the best practices that uh, can be followed. Uh, first, uh, let's go with the PaaS servers. So in PaaS, I would recommend to use the standard and premium tier. So yeah, I know in Azure, uh, app service has the different, uh, I think five different uh, plans now that goes from uh, free, standard, basic, uh, free, shared, standard, premium, and isolated. So I would recommend you to use uh, standard and premium because those are the only two plans which supports 
staging slot and automated backup. So let me give you a small insight about what is staging slot. So if people are aware about what is a blue green deployment, it is a similar kind of uh, setup, but in terms of pass servers. So imagine you having a, a website, which is your production website, and there are some development work which has happened and you want to deploy the new change into your production. But you are not sure whether these changes could break or it will work. So in order to have a test environment, which is a replica of a production, you can create a staging slot and deploy it over there. It will give you a real life, sorry, real perspective of how your production is, production environment looks like. And if everything is working fine in the staging slot, you can just wrap it. So your blue deployment will be your green, your green deployment will be your blue. And a simple swap can help you understand Next, these deployment slots are used to understand if, a, if sometime someone, some of the developer had made some change and that uh, change is not traceable and you want to know what is the last good known resource that has been deployed and restore it to that, that point. So these things are available in only in standard and premium tier. So that's why deployment slots are cru crucial, especially for a production workload. Avoid scaling up and scaling down. Instead of scaling up from standard to premium or premium or uh, from basic to premium, scale out. Scale out in such a manner that if your application is handling in by two uh, web apps, increase it to three web apps. If it is a VM scale set, use the scale set in such a way whether a minimum or uh, two virtual scale set has been uh, used. If the so, uh, metrics as per your uh, standard, for example, CPU utilization or uh, memory or the throughput is shooting up, increase or scale out, scale out your uh, application. Next, storing the configuration as app setting. As you are aware, the, uh, most of the configuration files are stored in web config or app config or even history access files. So, since these uh, credentials, these files has the credentials of a database, it is crucial to store it somewhere safe because at any point if your code is being misplaced or uploaded by mistake to a uh, open source source code management system, it will be a, a pretty big headache for you to change all these credentials. So that's why I always store all these credentials in an app setting where you can specify a parameter and pass all these values inside app setting and create a, a separate app service plan for production and testing environment. So you can have uh, multiple web apps hosted in a one single service plan, but I would recommend not to have a production and its testing in one single plan. And also try to have a three tier architecture or at least two tier architecture. Never have a monolithic environment. An Azure web app, if you are having an API, uh, <coughs> sorry, if you are having an API uh, layer as well as a web front layer, do not combine both of them and put it in one single web app. Segregate it in such a way so that even if you believe that API is causing the issue, you can scale out or scale up accordingly. Instead of scaling the whole web app which contains web front and web API. Next, avoid using Azure SQL backup to backup your Azure SQL database. So to give you a small insight about this, Azure SQL, uh, sorry, Azure App Services has the ability to backup even your uh, Azure SQL databases inside your Azure App Service plan itself. But please don't do that because this will increase the DTUs of by collecting the backpack files of Azure SQL uh, database. So once the DTUs are being utilized, uh, you again need to scale up or increase the storage size in order to attain the IOPS and DTUs. So I would recommend to take a backup of Azure SQL database separately and Azure App Service plan separately. So next, uh, let's uh, get uh, best practices of uh, what Azure SQL can provide and Azure SQL virtual machine can provide. So as I told you, Azure SQL 
as a pass service use standard and premium tier because in basic tier or general tier you are you have a point in time restoration point up to only 35 days so mainly for production environment do you do require a backup which is longer than 35 days as per uh, many of the company compliances so azure uh, sql database has the ability to have a backup for up to 10 years based on your retention policy so use them well next enable sql database auditing so database auditing as i told you gives you an insight about how well your query is running how much time it is taking for the particular query to run or execute and if this query is taking longer time it will help you to analyze how i can optimize this query or do i require any kind of uh, indexing in terms of optimizing my azure sql database also use gtu method when you are trying to design a simple and pre configured resources so never complicate so there are two kind of uh, skews in terms of azure sql database as a pass service so one is gtus other one is v code so if you believe like you are aware like how much core is required how much memory is required and how much storage space is required go with v code but if it is a simple web application and you don't uh, requ require uh, the virtual memories and as well as the uh, cpu consumption simply go with dtus so these dtus are uh, can be used for a uh, web development right next enable sql database encryption so td is the key part of every sql database so encrypting the data is crucial so all these uh, keys can be stored in azure key vault and the encryption will allow you to secure and have the control of the data which you are hosting in cloud and as i told you back up the database if it is a vm where the sql uh, is being hosted only take the backup of the database not the whole virtual machine because you are paying only for the database if you pay for the whole virtual machine and for the system file that is being backed up so that is based of cost so these are a couple of uh, general best practices in terms of uh, hosting on azure virtual machine so avoid running a production workload on a single uh, virtual machine so that means do avoid monolithic environment always go with two tier or three tier space and also make sure you use an availability set so this gives you the ability to make sure that your environment will never go down and also don't create only one virtual machine and put it in availability set it is of no use in order to get a maximum uh, availability for your workload to be hosted on azure or any cloud you sorry in azure please use availability set and this availability set must have two virtual machine in place and make sure these uh, virtual machines are pointed to a load balancer or application gateway which also gives you an extra, ex, extra protection then uh, replicate every virtual machine which is mainly a production environment using azure site recovery because this gives you a high availability and bcdr solution and use azure backup in order to backup the vms and uh, if you want to migrate your virtual machine from one virtual network to another virtual network which is lying on the same region please you can use azure backup so azure backup gives you an ability to restore on the same virtual machine or create a new virtual machine so if you have if you are uh, trying to reorganize your uh, network and you want to migrate your virtual machine seamlessly without any downtime go ahead with azure backup and choose the right virtual machine size based on the performance based on the metrics that you get from azure monitor have an analyzation plan and see how you can optimize it and understand what can be done in order to achieve the right size because uh, many a times b d series are not the only series that can be provisioned even the b series the bustable series are more cost efficient in order to gain at most uh, performance but not all the workloads can be hosted in b series because they do have some drawbacks in terms of network uh, transfer uh, speed etc 
but that's why you have to analyze what workload is this how crucial it is as per the management baseline understand the size of, of it accordingly and install application on the data server rather than os disk previously azure uh, only provides uh, os disk with 127 gb from the marketplace but currently it also provides 30 gb os disk with marketplace this will help us to segregate the application and uh, we can install the applications in the d drive and we can only uh, take a backup or archive the d drive that is the data disk uh, instead of the os disk so os disk can be taken as a image or a snapshot and automated in such a way if anything goes down you can create from the azure runbook to create a new virtual machine and detach your deep your uh, data disk from the existing machine and attach it to the new machine. This will be a very fast HA that can be obtained. And also enable diagnostic logs. So in order to uh, maintain the logs for more than 30 days, you have to enable it manually, which requires a storage account. And there is a slight cost involved, which is the storage cost and the data transfer cost while retrieving the data. And you can even put a retention policy based on the compliances for example if this policy is this uh, logs are not required for more than uh, uh, 60 days or 90 days you can uh, simply put a retention policy on the storage account and these logs will be deleted automatically the reason why diagnostic logs is important because in order to see the health of a virtual machine from outside or the last very good known state or where it has been uh, blocked or exactly where to troubleshoot from diagnostic logs are key crucial. The diagnostic log doesn't mean just the guest OS metrics logs. It also means you can uh, get the logs of every single kernel level logs. This will help us understand what went wrong at times of RCA. An Azure log collection extension will is currently only used for uh, Windows machines. So this will help you collect all the extensions and uh, what all uh, tools that are being installed inside a windows machine these all these uh, information can be collected and visualized from azure portal itself with the help of azure log collection extension so these are a couple of general best practices that uh, i would follow as i told you uh, use uh, diagnostic logging for uh, production it's a must because you need to know uh, the management always requires the rca in order to understand what went wrong so at that time diagnostic logs for the 1d1 which can help you secondly create a separate storage account for every log uh, you might have placed your organization in such a way or a department wise you have been segregated your resources or you might have uh, segregated based on the environment based it can be a production is or all the productions are in one uh, resource group and uh, there is in one resource group and uh, you add or testing environment is another resource group the same way segregate the automation the sorry segregate the storage account also in such a way all your production logs are stored in one uh, storage account all your dev logs are stored in one storage account and same for the UAD as well and uh, enable monitoring performance so this can help you understand even the IIS logs which are stored inside can be monitored from Azure uh, monitor so the, uh, in order to do that you need to enable guest OS metrics so this will give you a centralized panel to analyze all the logs together and also provision uh, two instances instead of one single instance as I told you always go with two instances instead of putting one big instance so this will make sure that even if one instance goes down other one is supporting your request so the reliability of uh, having two instances is very high and replicate the database across different region in a least paired region so every azure resource or every azure region are paired between each other for example in uh, india there are three different regions one is central india which is pune and west india that is mumbai and uh, south india which is in chennai so all these regions are intermapped using a high throughput network connectivity where if any one of the regions goes down Azure automatically transfer all of your workload to the nearest paired region so always see the paired region and replicate your resource accordingly
So this is a couple of uh, management baseline which we have uh, seen throughout this uh, presentation. So we have seen the workload operation uh, as per largest per workload operation inversed accordingly. The highest degree of resilience is required in terms of managing the workload operation. Then suggestion for the approximate of 20 percent of the workload that drives the business value. So make sure that you are only investing at the initial stage only 20 percent in the cloud or in the particular workload. Don't design a such a big environment and uh, because you need to have the implications and the cost driven has to be provided to the business management. So that's why start simple and go with a small 20 percent workload. Then typically reserve for critical and mission critical workloads. So if you are using a workload then it requires a mission critical uh, attention then please address it with the reservations that services which we spoke about. The same thing goes for all the platform operations as well and in order to enhance the management baseline go the lowest relative operation investment. Analyze exactly whether the workload which I am going to migrate it has to be in pass it ha or it has to be in a IIS. How it can give most relative operation investment. And also slightly improvise the business commitment using an additional cloud native operation tools. So we have discussed uh, more than uh, 10 to 20 tools today. So all these tools are most are native Microsoft tools. So you don't need most of them doesn't have any third party tools involved. So this many native tools can help you analyze and understand your cloud and manage it in a better way. Even managing uh, other clouds using uh, Microsoft uh, tools is also possible. As you know recently Azure cost management tool helps you analyze the cost of each and other cloud as well in one single place. For example, you can have an API call for AWS as well as Google and understand and manage your cost in Azure cost management. So as a cloud adoption framework, this is the practice that we follow. First we migrate, then we secure the environment and see what all vulnerabilities are there. Then we protect it with the BCDR uh, tools that we discussed. Then we use a monitoring tool in order to analyze or optimize what we have provisioned. Next we see whether the configuration that we have uh, that has been provisioned are perfect. If not, how to automate or configured in a right manner, then at the end we're gonna see we saw the governance, how governance plays a crucial part, and what all tools can be used to attain them. So these are a couple of my reference links. So most of all uh, all the slides which have uh, come across are being taken from them. So you can go to individual uh, links and check. So all of the best practices are being provided. So these slides will be available uh, online. You can check with uh, Ishwari to get these slides. If you have any questions, kindly address them. Okay, so before we stop, uh, I just want to tell one thing to everyone that kindly mail us your name, designation, and contact number so that I'll mail you your certificate of participation. I have mentioned this in the message box below. You can just have a look over there. I have mentioned the email address and what details you have to mail us. Okay. If you have any queries or anything related to uh, Azure, you can always ping me. I'm um, available in any of the social media or you can come through Ishwari in terms of any queries. I'm always ready to help. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Thank you Ishwari. Uh, don't forget to check the mailbox. I mean, don't forget to check the message which I have put over here. 
before leaving do have a look at it and also the email address thank you hello 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 was there a query from someone okay thank you guys bye